Okay, I think uh, we can start uh, anyway, the other uh, uh, people uh, can join us uh, during uh, the webinar without any limits. Uh, so thank you again uh, for being with us. This is one of the webinars that Europark organize uh, regularly. This time is about uh, transboundary cooperation, and we will speak about a very interesting uh, European tool that supports cross-border um, cooperation uh, in general about territories. And for us, it's very interesting to see how this tool can be uh, used by uh, protected areas. Um, maybe we can start uh, with uh, some uh, little rules about uh, uh, today. Please uh, uh, take into account that this webinar is recording. Uh, we are recording, so um, uh, if you can put your camera on, uh, it's always better, but it's up to you. It's uh, easier for people to speak, uh, <laughs> seeing uh, the other um, public uh, faces, but uh, up to you, of course. Use the chat for questions. Uh, record and all presentations of today will be published in the Europark webinar. At the end, please uh, fill in the evaluation form that you will receive in the link of the chat. It's very important for us to have uh, your feedback. And today, this webinar is facilitated by me, myself, Stefania Petrusillo. I am the policy officer of Europark and person in charge of uh, the program Transboundary Parks with the technical support of Jessica Miklem Kolenic, uh, my colleague uh, in charge of youth policy uh, for Europark, and today also technical support for this webinar. Thank you very much, Jessica, for your help. Uh, of course, uh, you can always contact us, uh, uh, Europark, uh, when you want. We will share also our uh, contact email. About today, next slide, the agenda. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Association of European Border Regions because we are organizing this webinar with this organization and we really hope that that will be a, a first collaboration because we have definitely a lot of uh, programs and initiatives that can be uh, can have uh, synergies and uh, collaboration together. So thank you very much for your uh, presence here today. We will start uh, with this welcome and uh, I will speak about uh, the Europark program to support uh, transboundary parks. Then we will listen uh, Lisa Bardot of uh, Scarpesco European Natural Park that will uh, uh, share with us uh, her experience about uh, cross-border rivers and water governance uh, uh, between uh, France and Belgium, and how they use uh, the B tool, uh, B solution tool. And then we will discover more in details what this tool is, uh, because uh, Cinzia and Marianne from the Association of European Border Regions, we will uh, tell us uh, more details how to um, present your uh, doubt and your case studies to, uh, to use, uh, how to use this uh, interesting tool. Then we will have more or less half an hour for questions and discussion. The idea is to close around 12 today. Next, please. Okay, so before to start, one second to relax. We will stay together uh, for a while. Uh, this is very um, formal and informal uh, conversation. So feel free to, uh, to share your thought. Just uh, take into account that what is recorded is the, the video, but not the chat. So we will try to read your comment in, in the chat. So one second, relax. And now I will start to present our Europark program. Okay, so we, as I said, I am the policy officer of Europark and I also the person in charge of this uh, program. Next slide, please. 
What is Europark? Europark is the largest nest network of European protected areas. We have around 400 members and each member uh, uh, manage a lot of protected areas. So indeed we represent thousands of protected areas. And next, uh, we work for nature protection and everything is connected with that. So agriculture, marine, tourism, uh, and so on, and cross-border cooperation. What and why we work? Uh, uh, why we work for uh, transboundary cooperation? First of all, because we know that nature knows no borders, but also next communities often are just uh, separated, but ad by administrative uh, borders. But they have a lot of connections uh, together, and also uh, work work uh, for uh, cross-border cooperation is a good opportunity to promote uh, um, traditional and new economic opportunities. Which are the benefits of for two protected areas that share uh, the border? Of course, uh, the benefits are for the nature, better management for protected areas, more visibility, more opportunities for projects, etc. For the staff, it can be very interesting because uh, increase knowledge and motivation for the community themselves, because they can uh, be more aware about the importance to be in cross-border areas. And also they can work for mutual understanding. And of course, for Europe, uh, this is uh, we, with Europark. Uh, in Europark, we said that this is a more European program that we have because it really is a way to build Europe on the ground. But of course, we have also uh, some challenges. Uh, politics, uh, we have to deal sometimes with instability. So it's very important that the politicians will to collaborate each other. Legal framework can be a barrier. This is the normal barrier in cross-border cooperation. And this is what we will speak about today. For the staff, it can be also a challenge because of the language, because of the time. For the protected areas uh, itself, uh, can be a matter of lack of funds. Uh, it's important to have uh, a personal, but also an institutional commitment uh, to collaborate together. And for the communities, we know that sometimes uh, the history was not so good between different uh, states. So sometimes there are uh, heavy historical memories to deal with. So Europark created this uh, program, Transboundary Parks program following nature design, that is a special verification and certification system to support, as I said, transboundary cooperation between European protected areas. This program is composed by some standards that uh, the parks have to follow, quali quality criteria and field of works. There is a process of verification that help the parks to understand with the um, expert from Europark if uh, they are working well and how they can improve. Then there is a formal certification, a formal award of this work that the, the areas are doing together. And we award them uh, during the award ceremony in the Europark uh, conferences. And then this process is repeated each five years. The program is open uh, to cross-border European protected areas that are members of Europark. This is uh, the map uh, of our uh, network at the moment. All the parks that are certified uh, by Europark compose, compose the Transpark Net family, because we feel really as a family. Here you can have also the, the link to discover more about these areas. And of course, if uh, among you there are uh, parks uh, that uh, want to join the, the network, uh, we'll be very glad to have uh, new members. What the Transpark Net uh, does, he works especially for networking, 
sharing experience, ideas, and solutions, exchange of best practices, getting more visibility of the transboundary work and challenges, and of course, enforcing a true European vision. When we speak about Europe, we don't speak only about the European Union, we speak really about the continent. We organize each year a meeting. Um, each meeting is in a different uh, transboundary area about a different topic. For example, this year was about uh, um, cooperation uh, for uh, uh, management and prevention of natural disasters as fires that we know is a very big uh, problem. And uh, this year, we will be in the north, uh, next year, sorry, we will be in the north uh, between Finland and Norway uh, in Aldi area. More information will be published very soon. Then we also uh, participate to the debates in Europe. So we published until now two, um, two documents. One was the declaration uh, done during the anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall about the commitment of the parks to work for mutual understanding and peace. And then we also contributed to the conference for the future of the Europe. So this is, uh, was my part. Thank you very much. Here you have uh, a list of uh, links where you can find more information. I am really open to all the questions and information you want to share with uh, or want to know. And if you are joining the conference of Europark this year, that will be in October, we will put in the chat the information so you can also join at the conference. You will find a lot of moment and a lot of people of the network to know more about our program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica, for sharing my presentation. And now uh, I will leave the floor to Lisa Bardot. Thank you. Lisa, please introduce yourself directly. And please, the floor is yours. Yes, I will share my screen first to see if everything is working well. Let me know if you can hear me well and see my, my full screen. Not yet. This is still in uh, PowerPoint mode. It's, so it's not full? It's not full. OK. <clears throat> Let me try. Of course, we made a lot of tests before, but it's always, as you know, yeah, always, <laughs> it's uh, always a moment. Good. So use my previous uh, slide, uh, relax, pray, <laughs> <laughs> and give to Lisa time. Now it should be fine. Okay. Perfect. So hi everyone, um, I'm Lisa Bardo, cross-border officer um, for the European Natural Park of Scarpesco Plains, but I'm employed by the French side yeah, for administrative matters. Um, so I will first start to, 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 to talk, uh, to present a little bit the topic um, and why is it, it was relevant for us to work on uh, water governments on the territory. And um, and then I will uh, then I will go into deeper detail about the, the reports. Um, so for those who don't know the the park, so we are a French and Belgium uh, natural park, and uh, we are we are characterized that the territory is characterized by uh, a diversity of wetlands. Um, with a lot of uh, cross-border canals and watercourses and uh, of a uh, lot of great ecological value. And most of the territory is uh, labelized with Ramsar sanctification. Um, 
so water resources is present uh, and uh, is also used for many kinds of purposes, um, which is uh, which is uh, like a high. Th there is a potential risk of conflict in the future. Uh, there is already some uh, conflicts regarding uh, climate change and uh, repartition between agriculture, for instance, and uh, natural resources. And so that's why it was interesting for us to apply uh, with this solution uh, with the water governance to um, try to identify the solu solutions uh, to this um, to this uh, to this uh, uh, to this cross border management of water resources. So um, how the, does the, the expert work um, regarding this uh, this topic? So she identifies three main uh, case studies, uh, very relevant uh, and very eloquent for like um, uh, the, the cross border management. Um, the three main resources, uh, the three main case studies illustrate uh, each an issue uh, regarding cross border management. Uh, the first uh, case study is um, the, the, the cr regards the cross-border maintenance of a, of, a, of a canal, a cross-border canal uh, called the JAR, and uh, the, the lack of coordination between the, the, the managers in France and in Belgium um, makes uh, overflowing on the Belgium side uh, very, very frequent, frequent, very often. So there, there was a first. Uh, this, this is the first uh, case study. The second one was um, the the management of an interact project, again uh, regarding a cross-border water course called El Non. And uh, the issue about the case study is that um, the difference between the French and Belgium administration made it super difficult to, um, to implement the activities of the project uh, on the ground. Um, and the third uh, case study um, was um, is the, the ESCO, ESCO River pollution, which occurred in 2020. And uh, this case study illustrates the, the, the difference between international agreements uh, an international legal framework between Belgium and France because uh, uh, like uh, France um, did obtain uh, uh, damages reparation very easily whereas Belgium side had to uh, had to uh, to fight uh, more uh, on um, on to 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 gain uh, justice on this case so so these three main uh, case studies, uh, they, they allow the expert to uh, point out the, the, the main obstacles, which are, of course, as, uh, as uh, Stéphanie already mentioned, legal, legal and administrative asymmetry. They are the main, um, I think, for all of, uh, all of you uh, uh, participate uh, here like the main uh, the main issues when uh, dealing with the natural uh, or cross border spaces um, and especially for water because uh, on the belgium side uh, how is it working on the belgium side it's working by um, the administrations are organized by um, the use of uh, the water course the use and the size um, whereas in france it's organized by um, it's a territorial organization, so it's not. Uh, it's not. The, we are not on the same level of uh, administrations and on the same level of. Uh, uh, we are not dealing with the same uh, issues really. And uh, also, when we talk about cross border, uh, we 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 know that uh, there is no legal obligation of. Uh, of uh, working in a cross-border way, so there's no obligation for the, the managers uh, to cooperate, to share information and to uh, coordinate about uh, the management of water crosses. So uh, this, uh, these, two, these two aspects 
creates generates like tensions uh, between stakeholders because uh, because of the misunderstanding because of uh, there is no knowledge about the key persons the the good uh, who you can contact in case of an issue on uh, uh, for the management on your side um, and this is actually a a vicious circle uh, in during the, the the good cooperation um, and um, and yes so this this uh, this is more this was more or less the state of play uh, uh, on on our territory and so the what are the the, the possible solutions that the experts uh, the experts um, propose to to propose us uh, in the report so to be to be very transparent, like there, there are um, four main solutions, and only two of uh, two of them can are, are more relevant for us because the two first, um, it's not really the core mission of the parks to to do this kind of job. Uh, it's actually a full time lobbying job, uh, working towards uh, politics and. Uh, at a regional and uh, national level, level and European level, so uh, it's not really the the, the 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 solutions we focused more on. Um, but uh, we 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 the, the the two last solutions: experimentation of uh, drafting management plans for transboundary rivers, and promoting co promoting cultural and administrative knowledge. Um, for us, it was it, it seems. Uh, more relevant, and um, and so we we decided to focus more on these two these two solutions um, to uh, let's say correct uh, or better organize the water governance on the territory. So how why uh, no, why knowing this uh, why having these solutions. Uh, written uh, black uh, on white is uh, useful for us. Um, let's say that, um, so it can, it can appear kind of uh, simple or easy or obvious to say that uh, internal age and is key and that we, uh, it's the lack of, of, uh, of knowledge that uh, creates um, issues of cooperation. But actually for us, uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing to have like a neutral and objective analysis um, explaining that because we are like a new, a recently created EGTC. Uh, we were established, the European Natural Park was established as an EGTC, uh, so as a formal uh, cross-border institution only last year. So for us, it's, uh, it, it comforts uh, the, our will and our strategy of um, uh, gathering all the stakeholders uh, around a topic uh, to, to, to address a particular issue. Um, we feel more legitimate to, to, to act and to mobilize, um, mobilize uh, stakeholders. We say that uh, Cross-border cooperation is only uh, a matter of uh, goodwill and it's only purely voluntary. But with the with the institution, the cross-border institution that we are, we have more, um, we are stronger and we have more legitimacy legitimacy to let's say force the the local the local stakeholders to work together. And so. Um, the, the two things we are trying to do, and not only since the report uh, was out, but uh, for many years and even more, uh, I, I only arrived last year, but for the two parks are working together for 40 years. So, um, which is very important for us, it's the, the informal and the informal way of uh, knowing each other, let's say. And so we, we, we dedicate uh, special moments for politicians, for technical partners um, and, uh, and managers to meet. Um, and, and so for instance, like we, we organize uh, 
uh, yearly um, uh, cross-border wishes, and it's uh, it's a good opportunity to make uh, forestry managers um, water uh, water watershed uh, managers um, to invite them, and it's a it's a it's an informal moment for them to exchange, to talk, and to go out of the offices, to go out of the the to to have a talk outside of the administrations, um, uh, the, the national administrations, uh, which is uh, the best way to uh, actually to to, to address uh, some issues and um, and to know how it's working on the other side. Um, another thing is also that uh, it it can be it can appear very simple, but actually we. We tend to forget when we are trying to build a new new projects, new cross-border projects. Uh, we are in the middle of Interreg right now, but we we tend to forget that um, we have to be measured and we have to focus on small scale projects uh, and uh, and uh, and ident really identify the, the 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 persons we can rely on, the person that they know. Uh, they know better we they are they are getting along well or not and so now uh, it's true that uh, when we look at the previous experience um, on various interact projects for instance maybe the 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 main difficulty was the the scale of the project and um, and so now we are we are, we are taking we are going to build from uh, from this uh, uh, this um, this fact to to then better address and better guide our cross border strategy. Um, yes, so um, so I think I'm more as uh, I'm, it's it's a more as ending. I just wanted to to end with the. Um, the, the, the general um, way we used, uh, like how did we work with the B Solution initiative? But um, I think this part will be more detailed with uh, Marianne and Cynthia. And um, so we, we submitted the case because we, we actually we didn't really know what to expect uh, with the tool, but um, we it's, it seemed to be. Uh, not really time consuming and actually it's not so we are quite satisfied with the uh, the the results because uh, it was uh, it, it was kind of uh, we thought it was kind of uh, efficient and uh, after submitting the case uh, we waited for more or less six months then uh, once uh, we received the notification of uh, the matching with the experts we had two preparatory meeting in order to better uh, identify and focus on the, the, the main obstacle and uh, we just had to draft um, um, like to, to help her with the like documentary resources for her to better identify uh, the territory and so on and the, 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 the issues at stakes and to draft a contact list um, of persons for the for, for her to interview, so about 10-ish percent in total. I don't know if it's working the same uh, the same way for all the, the 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 cases. In our cases, in because we are working on governments, so it's about people. I guess it was the it was the methodology uh, chosen for this uh, for this case, and uh, and we just had one final meeting with the experts. Uh, to present the findings and for her to um, advise uh, advise her uh, advise us on okay uh, that's why that's where we are you are what you can do next and uh, and uh, and yeah so um, to conclude I would say that we are quite satisfied with the with the results for us uh, it was about a government's a government's issue so um, it's about working with people it's about organization and uh, and it's not a solution that you can implement uh, uh, like uh, on a on a chosen day and uh, as from now it's going to work this way it's, uh, we know it's a long-term uh, 
process and uh, and uh, yeah so we think it's uh, still a good uh, good lobbying uh, lobbying tool and uh, and uh, it's gonna help us uh, with in the future thank you Super, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Lisa. Lisa um, will leave us uh, soon, but uh, she told me that uh, for the questions, uh, you can send the questions if you have a specific question for her, and then uh, she will answer by email. So feel free anyway to, um, to put your question in the chat. And Lisa, I don't know if you want to share your uh, email. If not, uh, I will share mine and you can write to me. Uh, the same. Uh, thank you very much, Elisa. Before to leave uh, the floor to Cinzia and Marianne, uh, just a few, 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 few comments from my side. I remember that when I visited the the park, uh, one big issue was exactly what Elisa mentioned. So uh, it was just uh, they were strongly discussing about a very big pollution. Uh, from the France, French side that was resolved in some way, but the consequences were also in Belgium and in Belgium the situation was much more difficult because the cause was from France. So this is exactly a very practical, concrete and important uh, case that a bit solution can uh, definitely help to solve. And uh, what I also liked, uh, but uh, Cinzia and Mariano will tell us about, that uh, they provide a sort of menu of solutions, several ideas, and then it's uh, the park that can identify what is better for their specific solution. They use also a lot of experience in the reg project, previous project, etc. That is also something very important because we have a lot of knowledge, a lot of material that sometimes the project is finished and everybody forgets. And this is very interesting uh, uh, to have a tool that reuse all this lection learned. And uh, another point that maybe we will discuss uh, in, the, in the debate is uh, to identify the right body that can make the difference because maybe sometimes the park as the problem, but it's not in the hand of the park to solve it. So also that is very interesting. Uh, last, last point, uh, Lisa mentioned the EGTC. Uh, it's another European tool. You find in the chat uh, the link to discover more, so the European Group for Territorial Cooperation, and the possibility uh, is a possibility to create a sort of association territorial association between two cross-border entities to work together. But this will be a matter of another, uh, another webinar, but just for you to know. Please, uh, our colleagues uh, from uh, association of region, cross-border region, please, the floor is yours. And thank you again for, your, for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting us. We're very happy to have this occasion also to meet with new stakeholders. So uh, very, very a sincere thank you for this cooperation. Um, okay, let me change slide. This usually, okay, <laughs> perfect. So my name is Cinzia, together with my colleague Marianne, we work at the Association of European Border Regions and representing the interest of border regions to enhance cross-border cooperation. Um, funnily enough, uh, referring to what Lisa said before, our president, uh, um, Caroline Lambert, is always referring to cross-border cooperation as uh, basically the same work of the hairdresser. You always have to go again to the hairdresser because the hair keep on growing. And it's the same with cross-border cooperation. It's something you have to keep on refreshing because as also um, Stefania mentioned, framework changes, political frameworks, also legal frameworks change. So we, we that's why our work is needed, so to say, the, the, the spirit of cross-border cooperation needs to be kept refreshed in order to really achieve the, um, the, the goals that we want to achieve, which is in your case, for example. And that's, of course, to the benefit of all citizens also not working 
on nature, but preserving nature is clearly very important. We're seeing that every day. So let's hope that with this collaboration, we can work together in that direction. So let's discover a little bit uh, more in detail what the solution is, um, also to clarify those that might be some outstanding question from the previous presentations. So the solution is an initiative to address uh, legal and administrative obstacles that unfortunately keep on coming up in everyday life in both the regions and in cross-border territories. The initiative is promoted by the Jirija, by the Commission, um, and is managed by us. And it's the results basically of a series of work started really in 2015 with the, um, with the 25th anniversary of Interreg, the main financial tool of the European Commission to support cooperation, where, um, you know, anniversaries are always also a moment to assess, okay, how are we doing, how, how what, what could we improve? And in 2015, then the Commission started seeing that Interreg is very beneficial, is helping a lot in terms of giving the support, the financial support that is needed to make cooperation happen, but there are still some gaps. Most of all, uh, legal and administrative obstacles cannot be tackled with money. It's a, a different kind of problem that, that arises. Um, so in 2017, uh, the commission uh, published this, the communication boosting growth and cohesion in European border regions, um, proposing some actions to then tackle specifically legal and administrative obstacles beyond Interreg. Um, and in 2021, with a new, um, with a new communication, EU border regions leave, leaving labs uh, of European integration, they also try to follow up basically on this new effort and the solution is part of this new effort, really to support cooperation beyond Interreg. That's a little bit the motto, so to say. Um, what is the objective of this solution specifically? Um, basically, we want to actually support local actors in border regions to solve these obstacles that arise. Um, the scope is um, European borders, but also borders with uh, EFTA countries, so Switzerland and Norway, for example, uh, but also IP, IPA countries, uh, at least. As an Italian, I'm always saying IPA, I still haven't learned if it's the correct way of saying it or not, but we're talking basically about the Balkans, for example. Um, and well, sorry, why is it important? Because there are border regions, there are lots of border regions. If we look at the uh, smallest administrative uh, methodology of counting regions, we're talking about 400 uh, over 400 regions that are bordering another European country or another uh, non-European country and its border. And of course, they also need to have uh, tools in place to be able to manage the territories, for example, in an efficient way. And also 30% of European citizens live in border regions. So we're talking actually about something that is very relevant to tackle. Um, so why the solution? Indeed, because these border obstacles do persist, they continue to affect our lives. Um, specifically, they, they can affect, for example, how we can provide and access public services in border regions, uh, offer the, uh, the offer of public transport, for example, can become difficult across national borders, the reimbursement of health healthcare costs, uh, those the access actually to hospital and to um, services in that can in that sense, but also access to labor markets uh, can can become difficult across the border. We know many administrative burdens, for example, Lisa also mentioned some of them, Lim the limitation of, um, of working remotely, for example, this is a hot topic at the moment in border regions, uh, the slow recognition of of uh, professionals, for example. So also sometimes if you're in a park, it might be difficult to hire uh, staff from both sides of the border, but also the quality uh, quality management of the territory can become particularly different, difficult if there is a border in between, um, understanding which laws apply on both sides of a park, for example, on the, um, of the border could, could become extra complicated if you have to uh, sets of regulations that apply. So in fact, 
and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going up in my slide, so to say. Um, in, indeed, these problems that we've seen, the problems that we want to, to tackle can actually arise, for example, because of a lack of coherence in the application of the law on the two sides of the border, or simply sometimes also the administrative um, procedures that would be in place to manage um, something, a project or a park, a territory, are are different. They don't really they don't really work well with each other. Or sometimes also the laws are forgetting that there are borders. That there are um, territories in which two different sets of rules or administrative procedures meet. So there's a gap. Uh, in terms of legal um, legal procedures. And these are precisely the instances that we look at with the solution and that we are trying to tackle and indeed try to offer some solutions. Um, so let's look specifically at B Solution 2.0, which is actually the, the current grant agreements that we have uh, the, uh, together with the commission in order to um, support local, local actors. Uh, what is the goal that we have? What is the target and the scope? And let's see then more and more we're looking if this is something for you as well. So the goal is to identify and promote cases, uh, so these obstacles, uh, and basically offer solutions to these obstacles to, again, legal and administrative nature. Uh, the targets are public bodies in border regions, uh, including public equivalent bodies. So this might be also um, an interesting information for um, the management of parks, I suppose, for example. And also we are um, directly, uh, the target group is also cross-border public, uh, sorry, cross-border structures, for example, uh, indeed EGTCs, so the European Grouping of Territorial Corporations, like uh, the one where Lisa Bardot is uh, working, um, or for example, uh, Euro regions, in case you have Euro regions in your area. Um, as I mentioned, we the, the, the scope, uh, so the, the, re the eligible regions to participate are all border regions along EU internal borders, both land and maritime borders, um, and also those along the, the borders with EFTA and IPA countries. <laughs> um, and as mentioned briefly, um, we have these four thematics. Um, policy areas basically that we focus on, like the public public services, labor market and education, the implementation of the European Green Deal, or more generic, um, simply institutional cooperation, so how institutions can work together. These are the themes that we require, uh, the, the cases, the obstacles to be um, fitted in, but they're fairly general, so I think that they would encompass everything. What is the support that we provide? Um, and here is, uh, um, we, we can finally explain what, what, what Lisa was referring to. Basically, B Solution indeed assigns um, an expert uh, in order for this expert to accompany you in understanding what exactly the obstacles that you're facing is, and also this, the, the expert suggests possible solutions one or two depending um so you the output then so what, what remains of the participation is the report that the expert has drafted for you um with a clear explanation of what is going on and also um concrete solutions how does it work basically this expert uh we um that we assign to you so um that means we look for the person that uh, would be able to work on your case based on the expert specific expertise for example of the of the person uh, language proficiencies of course the person m must be able to speak the languages that concern your area um, and the understanding of the specific territories the expert is hired is actually searched for unless you have someone of course we're also looking for new experts all the time there is a call for expression of interest indeed to um to find new experts and the expert is hired and 
paid directly by ABR. That, that means that the cost of the administration and the administration it's, itself is managed by us. Um, and then this person that we assign to you has a period of nine days to provide your consultancy um, within a period of three months. So you basically have within a, a period of three months this person at your disposal to um, look exactly into this uh, into this obstacle. For the participants, there is not the need to uh, to report anything. We only ask at the end of the participation to basically support if you are uh, if you agree or not uh, with the um, solution provided by the expert. For example, if you just to 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 make sure that there, you're aligned with the expert that works with you. Um, so why we say that this solution is a tool to solve your cross-border obstacle? Because first, first of all, because you receive a full report uh, that we hope is useful for you to then from there build toward the solution uh, together, of course, in coordination with the um, the, the stakeholders or the, the the competent authorities that the expert would have suggested you to. Um, get in touch with and also uh, for you there is the participation in a compendium that illustrates the variety of obstacles so it's also, also a way to enhance cross-border cooperation to see what the needs the real needs on the territory on the ground are to be solved and this also helps of course to uh, lobby as, uh, as Lisa was saying to lobby for what your needs are in a more coordinated way in a in in a more uh, substantial uh, way because you would have of course the support of a european project uh, of other peers like you in different regions and that of course that uh, we hope that gives uh, a better a stronger weight so to say to the needs of local actors that sometimes find it difficult to to be heard in uh, at national or even european level and this we hope gives basically visibility and strength to to your needs um, and also of course this is also a way to as i said to raise awareness of post product cooperation um, and to also demonstrate the weight and potential of border regions or and actors in border regions to uh, towards european integration as we believe that european integration begins uh, in border regions and in border areas um, the B solution actually already started in 2020, uh, sorry, 18. Um, we had a first phase between 18 and 21, and we already found 90 cases that we have already indeed published in two compendiums um, that are available on our website. And we, out of these 90 cases, we also draw some, some preliminary conclusions in this three publications that you can see here, um, where we uh, analyze what are the most common obstacles and what are the most common solutions that are available uh, or that are needed uh, um, for actors. We also have a little storytelling um, booklet to help everyone understand why it's important to cooperate and why there's still, we need to do more to offer better cooperation tools uh, to local actors, because at the moment, unfortunately, there are still are obstacles. Very briefly, what we have learned so far um, out of these 90 cases that we have collected, first of all, that the legal obstacle and the administrative obstacles on the ground in the reality of your daily jobs, and your daily lives are many and are different, uh, and so are the root causes. That means we do need more tailored solutions, and this solution really wants to be one of these. Um, and there are no of the self solutions sometimes. That means that that's why the support that you could get through our experts by participating in this solution really wants to give you your tailored solution for your territory, for your specific cause. And that's why we think it's important to keep on going with the solution. That's why it has been extended as well beyond the very first um, phase. Um, solution can involve several options, uh, but always what is important to have as a starting point to solve this obstacle is for sure a deep analysis 
in order for everyone to be exactly aware of what is the where is the problem you know you have a mouse in the house you have to understand where the mouse is coming from otherwise you cannot close all the doors and hoping that it's not coming in the kitchen um you uh, what is important is the political commitment uh in order to be able so also like lobbying in order to receive support for you from political uh, actors in your region is very important that's why it's important to share the information to make sure that everyone is aware in this in this sense of this multi-level engagement is important and capacity building which is what we are also trying to achieve with the solution and now i leave the word to marianne before uh, taking all the time <laughs> thank you marianne up to you Thank you, Tinsia. Um, so as mentioned previously, we are covering four thematic, but we thought the ones which might interest you the most uh, today was um, the border regions for the European Green Deal, because we know that climate does not stop at borders, uh, its effects doesn't stop at borders, and to overcome the challenges that come with uh, climate change evolution, uh, the European Green Deal strategy uh, has been launched to make our continent the first climate neutral continent and border regions have to take a, a stand into that, have to participate. And it's very important to look at it. And there is the challenges at the legal and administrative uh, level to, to move with that. And so we have two types of obstacles that we have observed and this is a little table to summarize um, examples of legal administrative obstacles that we gathered uh, throughout the last 90 cases that we selected in the last years. So for instance, um, looking at the legal framework, sometimes it's difficult to design and build infrastructures because there are diver diverging national rules. Uh, currently we have um, a case at the French Swiss border regarding the creation of a bridge and there is a environmental assessment being made. And at the legal level, the survey, there is different environmental law, which uh, make it difficult to, to allow for the permit uh, to be delivered and to, to build the bridge. Um, different regulations on necessary technical requirements are also uh, creating difficulties to set up projects uh, in favor of protection of biodiversity, for instance. Um, the lack of specific pro provision, um, th there is specific provisions, but they are often lacking uh, to, to integrate the cross-border dimension. As previously mentioned by Lisa, cross-border dim dimension is more a voluntary um, thing than really something compulsory. And so we, we observe that in practice, in many of the legal framework, this dimension is lacking and it has uh, negative effects on the territories. Looking at the administrative obstacles, um, there are different standards, different references for environmental management criteria, for spatial um, data. And this has also consequences for um, people who are trying to, to lead projects in favor of the environment in border regions. And looking at the solutions, because of course, that's what Peace Solution aims for, like providing solutions to the people in the territories. Uh, so there is often a mix of solutions and the, the combination of solution is always um, very useful. But looking at the legal aspect, um, the revision of law, the amendment of existing legislation is first a very important uh, measure. Of course, it takes time and we are aware of that. So this is always a political process also to engage. But with the report and this suggestion, it's a first objective analysis offered to the territories to be able to advocate for some um, legal change. Harmonization of rule is also uh, possible through bilateral agreements, for instance, um, and creation of, of um, memorandum of understanding, for instance. There is also a solution that is more or less pending at the moment, which is uh, the ECBM, the European Cross-Border Mechanism that you may have heard of. Um, today, it's not yet implemented. It's a proposal that has been launched a few years ago. It's been uh, talked again in the recent month um, at the U European Parliament with a new name, which is Bridge EU. Um, 
this is not yet to be implemented, but this is a good idea to have in mind for future co strengthening of the cross-border cooperation uh, as a mechanism that would allow um, a legislation of one country, of one region to apply on the other region. But we are not there yet, so too good to have in mind though. Um, looking at the administrative capacity, the capacity building of the coordination and governance, um, there are many solutions that can be proposed, um, which often go through communication and dialogue and sharing of information, sharing of knowledge. As Lisa was saying, it's a very important aspect of cross-border cooperation. So joint management structures, um, unified command, harmonized methods, and management standards, for instance. Um, finally, like cross-cutting solutions that are involving all of the aspects, um, but also more targeted actions like raining, raising actions or pilot projects are very much encouraged to support um, the good cooperation on the two sides of the border. Um, we wanted to give you an example of a case that we, we collected a, a few years ago regarding improvement of condition for cross-border aerial forest fire control at the border between Spain and Portugal. Um, and we know it's a very current topic, sadly, because we have had fires in Europe all over the summer and for several summers now. And also um, the, the topic of the Transpac Net meeting this year was about fire and water how to deal with natural disaster in transborder recuperation. So we see it's a very topical and, and, and current, current challenge that we are facing. And in border regions, when this disaster happened, how do the team coordinate? How do um, the rescue team, the, um, the firemen, etc., cooperate to address uh, the fire? Um, and we had this problem in this region where there was a lack of mutual recognition uh, of certificates from one country to another. For instance, in Portugal, um, it was not recognized. The Spanish certificate was not recognized, so the, it meant that the Spanish aviation crews could not enter Portugal to assist um, their colleagues from the Portuguese side in case of uh, damage, fire, uh, etc. And also the language skills happen to be the requirements, the legal requirements and language that were put by, by uh, the civil aviation crew were really high and demanding. Um, and it became an obstacle for, for people to cooperate. Um, so with these examples, uh, we move to why <laughs> moving to the operational part of how you can take part of the INB solution and the call for proposal we've launched. So there is a, a call for proposal on our website, which is accessible via this link. We'll put it later in the chat. It's an online form, which is very simple, quick to fill. And we are at your disposal also to discuss it further if you have any question on the on the form itself. There is guidelines to help you with the application and FAQ also available on the link. To give you the timeline, uh, you have two months. <laughs> it's uh, the, the call is closing on the 10th of November and we will accept um, application on a rolling basis with immediate application. We may have had some delays in the past, but now uh, we are really uh, eager to get uh, all the cases um, Start to start the implementation of the cases as soon as possible. So please, if you have uh, something in mind already, don't hesitate to to reach out and apply. Uh, eligibility criteria. Um, first of all, the application must be submitted online via the link mentioned before the deadline. Uh, it should be preferably in English, if possible, the application. But we welcome all application written in any of the European language. Um, we will use the translation tool on our side as we unfortunately don't master all the languages, but we'll make sure that um, we understand it. We'll ask you questions if we need some, some you know, references, some additional details. But this is also an opportunity that we hope will not, um, will, will allow you to 
not be shy and don't hesitate. If you have any doubts, just write in your in your language and, and we'll uh, we'll deal afterwards. Um, we'll communicate in English, but we'll deal afterwards with it. Um, the applicants, as uh, Chinza said, must be public bodies uh, or public equivalent bodies. It could be at a national, regional or local level. Um, it just have to be, you know, on the border, which is the core of our um, project. Cross-border entities are welcomed as well. And again, uh, the territory has to be located uh, along the border with an another EU member state, OFTA or IPA countries. Um, now looking at the awarding criteria, so the criteria on which we will select you, uh, each application should address a specific obstacle, meaning that uh, if in your application there is something related to energy, something related to, I mean, sorry, in your territory, you have a problem with energy sector, you have a problem with um, assistance, I don't know, like labor market problem. This would be different obstacles. And for each obstacle, you can submit an application. And for each obstacle and application, you will receive a, a, a different support. Um, in the application form, there is four criteria that are important to, to explain to us. Uh, first of all is to, as much as you can, present us the obstacle that you are facing. Uh, it has to be a real and documented obstacle. So if you have illustrative examples to provide us, um, to, to assert and to show how uh, the obstacle is built, what is the origin of the obstacle, do you already know um, which legal uh, which, regu which regulation is causing the obstacle on one side of the border or the other, please mention as many details as you can on the obstacle. This is for us to get to have a, an overview of what is actually at stake on your territory and how we can help. The second criteria is the potential increase in cross-border cooperation um, if the obstacle is solved. So of course here we don't ask uh, something very detailed, it's more like an estimation, like if we manage to remove the obstacle, what would be the benefits on your territory? How would this improve the life of people in border regions, the management of a park, uh, for instance, like the impact on the biodiversity eventually, what would be all the estimated benefits on cross-border cooperation? Um, the third criteria is the mandate to devise solutions so here we look at uh, what is your competence regarding the solutions. Like for instance, uh, do you have competence to act upon the solutions, to move the solution forward? If you said, for instance, you are not, uh, you're, you have more like a facilitator role, um, then who, who could be the relevant authorities to which we could address and talk uh, in order to make progress on the problem? Um, finally, the last uh, criteria is the replicability potential of the action. We often see, um, now we have been on this solution for many years, that there is several obstacles or that ex similar obstacles that appear on different borders. And if you are aware of that, um, that's interesting for you to share with us that, okay, this is the border a problem at the French-Spanish border, but actually it's also happening at the Italian-Slovenian border. Um, it gives also weight. And this is helping us also to build a, a more, a stronger uh, weight, a stronger advocacy and lobby role towards the institution by pointing out that it's a problem that is spreading or that is existing in many, many borders. Um, yeah. uh, how we assess the application, we score each of these four criteria on a scale from one to five, um, and you, to, to be selected, the, the applicant has to have a minimum of 12 points. In all cases, we notify the results of, uh, of the application. So um, if there is improvement sometimes to be made, like if the applica application was good, but we were missing some elements to really select it, we'll come back here and ask some questions um, to improve the proposal. And that is uh, the end of the presentation. We will, uh, well, we thank you for your attention. We'll take any questions uh, coming uh, from you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, very, very interesting. I think all uh, audience uh, share my impression that uh, there are a lot of uh, potentiality for us with this uh, tool. Um, think, uh, please, about questions. Feel free to share uh, them uh, in our chat. Meanwhile, that you are thinking, uh, I would like to um, to say something uh, that for me is very important. Definitely, you mentioned uh, we are speaking about something very concrete, very on the field, but there is a political background that we have to take into account. And uh, I really think, hope, as Europark, we hope that this uh, attention that is increasing to the cross-border cooperation will be also something that will be supported from the new parliament and the new commission from the next year when we will have the elections. So in our uh, vote, uh, please, uh, you vote what you want, of course, but take into account that uh, our candidate have to also to take into account our difficulties uh, for uh, cross-border cooperation. And um, then uh, something uh, uh, that I also would like to ask you is about, uh, um, no, first of all, I would like to say that uh, parks are absolutely um, allowed uh, to to present so because they are to present questions because they are public authorities despite the differences from each uh, country and I think also association no can also territorial associations for example we have some case that uh, parka are managed by association maybe uh, Cinzia and Mariana you can also explain or Andre uh, you can. Uh, share your specific case as association managing the cross-border areas and to understand if they can be um, um, eligible to present. Uh, we are very happy to see that it's possible also to deal with no European uh, um, border because in our network, definitely we have parks that share a border with Norway, for example, with Switzerland, uh, Russia, unfortunately for the moment, everything is uh, stopped, uh, we know why. Uh, but in the future, we really hope to increase uh, this collaboration with other no EU uh, areas. Okay, so uh, I don't know if there is already some questions. Okay, uh, maybe uh, there is one that Stefano shared only to me. Sorry, I will read it. <laughs> Stefano, you can also share it to the, the group. Can be solution tool help in solving the problem of a common and unique management body. Um, plus a plan for Natura 2000 areas. So definitely there is an issue about the Natura 2000 areas because uh, the two countries uh, have different, often different, uh, uh, different uh, way to interpret also the rules. So if you have uh, some experiences about that, and uh, I I leave you the floor to answer to this question because uh, Stefano Santi is leaving. And then I will give uh, the floor to the colleagues that raised uh, their hand. And then I will take the floor again for some other questions. Please, uh, Cinzia, I would like to answer to the Okay, first. to Stefano. Yeah, um, it depends. So it in general, yes, we actually already had another case that was uh, dealing with the difficulties of implementing the Natura 2000 um, regulation indeed between uh, Spain and Portugal again, actually. Um, so generally, as a quick answer, yes, that would be a topic, for example, that could be submitted. I'm not sure exactly what is the 
um, obstacle here. So that would be, need to be a little bit um, specified also in our guidelines uh, um, that you'll find on our website. Uh, there are also eventually some leading questions that I'm going to also eventually present later, but I, I understand that now Stefano needs to leave so we can give the floor. Just as a quick answer, Stefano, yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Andre, you raise your hand. Andre also sent uh, now a question in the chat, but also two questions before, uh, before the webinar. I don't know, Andre, if you want to address the three questions or uh, now you as you, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, sure. Um, my name is André Klaassen. I'm a um, coordinator of a Dutch-German um, uh, cross-border uh, natural park. Um, we are not managers of the park, but we are a, sp a, a small organization dedicated to the transboundary cooperation. Um, and my question I just stated, um, uh, op upon your presentation is do you help um, to analyze the problem or do you also help to solve it because we um, uh, have um, uh, we usually work around problems that are bigger than us because we don't have capacity to solve it um, we have uh, broadcasting issues for our cell phone on the border um, that's too big for us. So um, if I present a problem that we cannot deal with ourselves, you can analyze it, but then we're stuck anyway because uh, we need people who can solve it. That's my... Uh, fair question. So uh, initially the objective... Sorry, I need to be a bit weird because of the sun right in my face. Uh, the objective of the solution, uh, the first objective is to give support to the applicant. Uh, support merely through suggestions. Uh, we cannot really help in the implementation. What there are two suggestions I would give you in this case. Uh, you could contact the EGTC or the Internet program in your area, for example, as they are the actors that are really um, committed and also um, competent to eventually bring such obstacles that you as an actor in the region encounter but then of course you cannot have the capacities to solve it because your daily mission so to say is a different one on the other hand um the egtcs or i don't know in which area exactly you are in the netherlands and um between the netherlands and germany but there are different euro regions there uh, specifically the Oregio is the bigger one and the first one actually, but there are different ones and they could, for example, I would say, be able to follow up. Eventually you can see if you could send a co-application. So where one of you, either you or them directly could be the uh, main applicant and the other one could be the co-applicant. And then the suggestions could be really taken forward, I would say, by the actors in the area we the, the solutions that you receive are suggestion from the the experts are suggestions but then the implementation is up to you unfortunately on the other hand now we have um we have understood that there is a need to look more into that at the moment we have also capacity to offer an additional support so with nine extra nine or ten maybe even ten extra days of support from the expert to lead even more into the um into the implementation on the other hand of course the implementation the main actor to take up the, the implementation would have to be the local actors at the local level. That's why I would really suggest, for example, to get in touch with Euroregion or Interreg programs to see if they can, uh, probably Euroregion actually better, or GTC in the area if they could, as their mission is to improve the cross-border cooperation, if they could help then moving that forward, if that helps. Uh, Perfect. Thank you oh. very much. I don't know, Andre. Uh, maybe before to 
pass to other questions. I don't know. I saw first the other uh, hand, just to change a little bit. Uh, no, nobody else want to intervene. So Andre, you can continue, please. Okay. Yeah, I already mentioned the cell phone uh, connection uh, issue. So that was my first question I sent in upon your mail. I think that's answered um, enough. Um, then there is like uh, European law. No, maybe I should introduce it. Um, we're trying to um, uh, stimulate horse riding recreation uh, in our area. It's very suitable. Uh, we can handle uh, more horse riding activities. Um, but there's an European uh, animal health law that needs people uh, to go to a vet to get a certificate of health uh, to cross the border with your horse. Um, there are in that law uh, possibilities for exemptions, but that depends on political um, uh, decisions. It's the, the minister who has to uh, sign eventually um, uh, this uh, exemption. Um, so th that is one uh, obstacle in this, huh, which is a political issue and it's not a legal issue because legally we can solve this. So uh, the question is, um, um, uh, I fear you cannot help in this uh, matter. Another one uh, related issue um, is that there is, um, on the German side, there is a law that uh, says uh, you need to pay a certain amount to be able to to be allowed to use uh, roads in the outer area, so not in town, but in in the field, uh, let's say. Um, and uh, you pay, and uh, you need to uh, have this, um, uh, like in the, the 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 like in the highway, you need a sticker on your car, uh, you need something on your horse uh, to show that you pay this. Um, we do not have that on the Dutch side, um, which makes it very uh, complicated to communicate to users about this issue. We're trying to make an identical uh, network of uh, tracks where you can easily pass. Um, yeah, you see, uh, I go from number one to number two to number 16 to number 13 and back to where I started. Um, and in that network, you don't notice you will, you will cross the border. But uh, as soon as you cross the border, you have to pay uh, an amount to be allowed to use those paths. Um, uh, and we, we are uh, discussing that at the moment with um, uh, the national um, uh, unions, horse riding unions, association of, youth, of, of horse riders. Uh, and um, the local governments, but it's also not clear who is um, able to, to are, are there exemptions possible? Should we uh, adapt the same system in the Netherlands or should we make it voluntary on the Dutch side? We, these are our issues and my question is, are they suitable for these solutions or uh, not? Okay, um, let me start with the vet, uh, the vet requirements, for example, for horse riding, because you were saying that it's not, um, it is not uh, eligible. On the other hand, uh, we had actually a very similar case um, between Norway and Finland in this case, for example, where also they wanted to implement uh, more and more um, dog sledge um, riding, I think it's called, and ho uh, Tackle those upon with the um, with the um, with the horses, and you said that it's political. On the other hand, every law is political at the end of the day. If you already know exactly what to do and you you're clear on who to contact and how to contact and how to present a solution and you're strong enough, so to say, then of course you don't need the solution. The solution is needed though in case you well you know that you might not need to write a law but you don't know for example to who you could submit it or you don't know what the what the agreements would need to to entail and you know if if you are unsure 
how to tackle it, then the expert could be the person who would, for example, tell you, look, the, 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 these are the exact law that, that needs to be um, mentioned. These are, this is the, this is the amendment, like how to write the amendment and so on and so on. With the objective too, so the, with this extra um, support that we give, the expert in this case could also draft the agreement, for example, on your behalf and uh, letting you know, um, and then you, you would also receive support. Sorry, I didn't mention it before to organize, for example, a workshop. We give up to 3,000 euros to organize a workshop, or rather I like to call it a round table to invite the competent authorities, for example, that would help you to move forward the, um, the, adop uh, yeah, the adoption, for example, because of course it's a political, um, it's the decision of policymakers, but maybe you can invite policymakers have the, the experts through a European uh, project showing them, okay, this is the problem. This is why we need to solve it. Here is the solution. And you really, ideally, we like to think that we help you move the, the solution to the real implementation. So you might want to think also about the, uh, the horse riding issue. For the payment of the, um, of this uh, per permission basically to horse ride. Um, it depends on how you frame the, the obstacle to us, so to say. Um, what we're looking for are legal and uh, administrative, but this could actually be framed as an, an administrative uh, obstacle, for example, because there is a procedure in one of the countries for which you have rules to for horse riding to be allowed, and you need to coordinate the procedure with the other uh, with the other country. So the expert could, for example, suggest some some ways to do that. Um, just to maybe this is also helpful to everyone. As I mentioned before, these questions are also listed in our guidelines that you find on our website. But basically, some questions that you can help ask ask yourself um, in order to understand if you should submit a, uh, an obstacle through the solution could be, for example, um, which are the legal or administrative provisions that the obstacle might be caused by, for example, but most of all, how is the cooperation with your neighbors affected by the obstacle? If this, uh, or in a little bit of a description of the general context, um, and then which kind of actions or services are, is prevented or limited by the obstacle? Does, your, does the case that you have at hand actually prevents as a service, or in this case, it will be a leisure service, but it's still a service to citizens. Uh, does, does that have an impact on the on, on cooperation, for example, or on exchange? Then if the answer is yes, then it's eligible for this solution, for example. Um, you'll find the questions on the guideline, and that might really be a little bit of a like, oh, okay, actually this does. And we also thought about the phone issue that you submitted. Indeed, we had the question beforehand. I think Marianne might want to reply to this. Sorry, just to take into account that we have only uh, five minutes. There is another question and then uh, we will close. Uh, meanwhile, uh, my colleague Esther will put uh, in the chat uh, the evaluation form. So please copy the link, open the link and uh, uh, start uh, as soon as we finish few seconds more uh, to send us uh, your impression about the webinar. Marianne, please. Yes, uh, regarding the the potential case uh, with the, um, it was, yeah, the network problem, the network wasn't functioning well at the border when you were using the phone and so on. As with the, with the first elements that you gave us, we understood that it was maybe more technical problem, but if you have, knowledge if you are aware of any legal re regulation that may be at the root of this technical problem then we may link it, we may be able to link it with the solution but again it has to be on a legal administrative ground 
And as we understood it from the first um, assessment, let's say, it seems more like as a technical problem, so it wouldn't fall into the scope of B solution. But please correct me if I if yeah. I misunderstood anything, something. Okay. Um, uh, for us, it's a technical problem. We don't have a broadcast uh, at the border area, which is very dangerous in case of forest fire. So for us, it's a technical problem, but I understand it is a legal problem because in uh, the rest of the country, you don't have problems uh, switching from one antenna to another one if you're riding on the highway. It's only happening when you cross the border. And that um, there might not be antennas in the area, but they are there. Uh, but uh, they say uh, we cannot beam our um, uh, waves uh, uh, into uh, the other country. There's, uh, they explain it by there is a legal restriction not to broadcast into another country with uh, too much uh, energy. And um, I, that's what they tell me. I don't, I don't know more than this. Um, I'm really sorry. Uh, I should just to do like this. So sorry to interrupt you, but really, maybe we should really... contact directly. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, Thank this you. is an interesting topic because also security, as you said, Andre, that's happened also during uh, uh, the big fire between uh, the parks, uh, the park from uh, yes. uh, in Germany and uh, in Czech Republic. By the way, there were also rules about the NATO and a. Uh, to uh, because they couldn't use the same military uh, connection to speak each other during the events, but the military were involved, the army were involved to solve uh, the fire. So it's something that seems just a little thing, but indeed it can be very important. Another thing that I would like to say is that not only the the case studies that are uh, included uh, in uh, the document in the document uh, on a green deal can be interesting for you parks but also the other publications because as a territories you deal with a lot of uh, topics so have a look to all case studies Cinzia Marianne, if uh, one aspect uh, uh, very important is to have a written document for the park that can also show to push the situation changing. But if a case study is already done by other one, are you able to make some officially to say, yes, this is similar to the other case, so refer to that? And uh, last, last quick question about Natura 2000. It could be possible to have a collective demand because Natura 2000 can be a general issue for our network. Could we imagine to have a call, a, a question as a Transpark Net uh, uh, family? A question. Okay. Thank you. So I start with the last one. Um, no, yes and no. Ideally, we cannot be submitted by Trans Transpark because we actually need an eligible country, an eligible partner. Okay. On the other hand, we are dealing now with a very similar issue uh, in which basically I think it's like one local actor is in, is getting involved to change, uh, to amend actually a European law that is on the making because, and this would also impact everyone else. So you would need basically to support, to find one in your network who wants to- Perfect. Yeah, and yeah. the solution will be- We will do like this. Everyone. As for the, for the first question, um, about similar cases. The thing is that, of course, we can, I mean, if we receive a question on a, on something that has already been tackled, we can also refer to, and we're happy to give them all the information. Actually, also all the reports are are or will be uh, open openly available to everyone, and we can also put in touch persons. On the other hand, as we said before, often the solutions are actually tailored and the obstacles are tailored even though it sounds exactly the same but because it's rooted in the national laws so unless it's exactly the same countries and eventually regional laws are not because it depends also on the regional laws eventually ne almost never but it could be so that's why we would also take an obstacle that has been already taken uh, specifically in order to see what it, what are exactly the, 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 the what is perfect the, 
Perfect. That it's is very important also, so we can also propose a new uh, topics that maybe are already uh, in the document, but in a different way. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, again, please uh, fill in the, uh, the evaluation form. We really need your impression, your opinion to improve our work. Again, thank you, thank you very much to our speakers. They were great. Uh, you have in the chat my email. Uh, feel free to contact me and to contact, uh, and I will put you in contact with all others if you need. Thank you again to Jessica for her support. Uh, of course, thanks to all of you for being to, with us. Bye bye.